Steve Dotto here. Today I want to talk to you about using your calendar a little bit more effectively. Five killer tips to finding more productivity using your calendar. Now, calendar apps are not the sort of tool that we typically think about developing our productivity chops in. I think that's because we use them fairly sparingly, actually. We go in and we enter some data about an appointment and then we refer to it. Mainly we refer to our calendar and use our calendar as a reference tool more than anything else. But we can still develop some really great habits and some really great techniques for getting more out of using our calendar. So for this demo, I'm going to be in Google Calendar and I'm going to be looking at the tips in it. The first one is actually viewing the calendar, the thing that we do the most. Going in, taking a look, seeing what's coming up at a certain time or a certain date. Now, typically speaking, when you go into Google Calendar and look at a date, you'd if it was in the future, you'd probably click on changing the view from the week at a glance that we see here to month or a different style that way. Watch what you can do here is you can just choose the uh, from the quick pick menu here. This is a, a little this shows us the entire month. If I just click on today's date and then drag my mouse to the right hand side, I can select, say, a two week range like I've just done here or a three week range, and then it will resolve that range onto the screen. So that's a very quick way for seeing uh, changing your at a glance uh, settings for looking at your calendar. Really like that. That's a great way to do things. While we're in this area of this mini calendar here, creating appointments is something that can be a little bit click intensive. You click on create the appointment, you click on the date, you click on keep clicking. They have a natural language engine here. If you click on the, if you look, if you just click on the create, you create a, an appointment the normal way you would. But just to the right hand side, if you click on quick add, that brings up a dialog box that looks for natural language. So if I just type in Wednesday, 2 p.m., Dan Zimmer, lunch and then watch where it puts it it puts this in wednesday at 1400 so if i look here in my calendar that's today here there's the appointment with dan zimmer wednesday 2 p.m for lunch so it looks for that natural language the way that you the way that you put it and you can put recurring events and all sorts of things so that will save you some time as you're entering calendar events especially when you're on the phone with somebody and you're making the appointment now that quick ad feature is really, really useful. Let's stay on this view for a moment and let me show you the agenda option here. And now what we get is we get a text description of everything that we have booked in the day. So this is this is kind of like just like a handwritten out agenda of all of our appointments, just the appointments with none of the open time being reflected. So you can plan for your next meeting or your next appointment just by looking at this. Now this is useful to view your day this way, but even more useful would be to have this emailed or texted to us. So if you go over to your calendar listing over here on the left hand side, and if I click on my main calendar, which is this one here, I've got some additional options to play with, including changing the color of my calendar and a few other things. But I want to show you this reminders and notifications option. I click on that and that brings me into how I'm notified of up upcoming appointments. And one of those is to receive a daily agenda by email at five o'clock in the morning effectively and receive it by email. So I can click there and ask for it to be sent to me. And this will also allow me to modify how I'm notified of other types of appointments and upcoming events as well. But that daily agenda being emailed, that's something that a lot of people like to do and find very, very valuable. Now you might notice in my agenda here, I have the weather forecast for the day. That's something that some people like to add to their to their uh, calendar because you know sometimes you're cooped up in the office and you don't know what the weather forecast is for the rest of the week so going to the weather app might be a little bit of a hassle it, this way here it's in your calendar which is typically when you're doing your planning now how you turn that on how you turn that option on is you go into your settings and you should always play around in your settings of all these applications in google calendar just like in Go gmail uh you also have a labs feature look over here now we're not going to use the labs feature for this but there's all these additional little tools that you can choose. This is one that I really like, which is the world clock, which will put a world clock in. Uh, if you have a lot of meetings that are out of your time zone, it'll help you to resolve those meetings. So the Google labs is there as well. But for this particular case, I want to look at my general calendar settings. And if we scroll down just a wee bit in it, we find location. If you put your location in and then ask it to show the weather at your location based on Celsius or Fahrenheit, you will then have that little display that I have in my calendar, which shows me the upcoming weather for the, uh, for the day before. And it also kind of keeps a record of the weather, what the weather was like in the past, which is kind of useful as well. If you're saying, wasn't it rainy that day? You can look back and see if it was actually rainy that day. 
pretty useful feature. While we're talking about these calendars over here, there is one other tip that I wanted to show you, which is adding a uh, kind of group or, or fun calendars to your calendar. One of the beauties of using a shared calendar or an internet based calendar like a Google Calendar is we can have multiple different we can have multiple different calendars. So we've got them for our family, for booking our cabin and for the theater that I work with and my daughter's schedule and all sorts of, I've got all sorts of calendars that I can turn on or off depending if I want to see them or not. And those are other people's calendars that I subscribe to just so I can see what's happening. So it works great from a team mentality or a team perspective. But this is something that's always worth having a boo at. Take a look here and Browse interesting calendars. Do this. Why would you want to do this? Well, you've got all sorts of holidays, so you can plug in the holidays, so, it, so you automatically have all of your holidays in it. If you're interested in what French holidays are, you can add the French holidays. I'm personally not that interested in what holidays are in France. Instead, I'm interested in my local team's schedule, so I can kind of plan my weeks and months around the Vancouver Canucks. So I go to hockey. I hope I haven't offended anybody with being a Canuck fan, but I was born here. It's not my fault. And I scroll way down and I can add the Vancouver Canucks schedule to my calendar. And we can see all the different little pucks that show me the date. And all I have to do is click on subscribe. And now the dates of my favorite team will be automatically imported into my calendar, both home and away. That's a pretty cool way to add some extra functionality in Google Calendar. So there you have five tips that should make using your calendar that much more pleasant, but most importantly, make you that much more productive using your calendar. That's the goal here on Dotto Tech, is to help you master your technology. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending time with me today.